All right, so the next thing we're going to do is start working on the whole wheel material. And what I mean by that is the whole assembly. In the past, we did the uh, the carbon fiber body, but breaking it up into part by part, by part could get very time consuming and just way too many little snippet videos. So I just figured let's just start grouping things together. So the first things first is the wheel. Now, here's the deal. I looked at the materials compared to what the reference on the internet is, and a lot of these are inaccurate in terms of what they are. So for instance, this wheel was labeled chrome, and so are all, a lot of other elements on the car. So what I did right now is I isolated the carbon fiber because carbon fiber glossy is accurate. Everything else was kind of uh, semi-accurate. So you select this, you hold control press I, select invert and then just assign a brand new blank material. So that way we start from scratch. We have nothing telling us what things are and we could focus on what we see with reference online. So before we start this, we of course have, we have metals, we have warm metals, we have cool metals, we have black uh, plastic metal diffused, then we have the glossy one, then we have our uh, golden Lamborghini emblem, we have our valve stem, we have our tire. Those are kind of the main key materials that I've looked at of uh, photos on the internet, and that's what we're going to go after. Now, the carbon ceramic brake texture. I have a custom maps folder I've been kind of assembling for this tutorial segment. A lot of these I'm going to try to create on my own, so that way there's no legal issues. However, some other things, why reinvent the wheel when other artists are providing content for free? And so there's this texture right here. It's a beautiful carbon ceramic brake texture. The artist that made it, his name is Sergey, and then I'm probably going to mispronounce the last name, but it's or Eg Igorenkov. Um, now, if you go to his website, which is igorenkov.com, and I'll add it into the comments section, and then if you go on the top right, these two buttons, you'll get to see he gives out a few textures. One's a carbon ceramic, one's a Pilot Sport 4S sidewall, and then you could take a look at his work as well. Really amazing artist, does amazing work. And like this image right here, full CGI, the people, the vehicle, it's just great artist and really kind of him to share the uh, the texture that we'll be using for this tutorial, at least for a part of it. So now that we have a basic override on everything, we gotta look at what it is that the real wheel consists of. So here's a reference I found on the internet and what we have is, of course, we have a rim, which is kind of like a, a semi-matte, a, a satin, aluminum, metal. We have a little bit of, as you can see, natural wear and tear, a little bit of bump, and then we have our metal valve stem, we have our sidewall tire, our tread tire, and we have our emblem, which is gold, we have a black paint, and then we have a gloss black cap. Then the hardware that's black, and of course we have our caliper with the badging, the branding, all the good stuff. So with that being said, let's get started on creating these materials and we'll try to kind of run through it so the tutorial is not too long so you don't get bored. But the concept of what we're doing is very similar on and on and on. It's just a matter of adjusting colors and texture maps. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with the maps that we have available that came with the file. That's the tire and then this tire sidewall. So I'm going to do a very quick uh, rough one. However, if you go to the uh, Automotive CGI YouTube channel and you go to videos, down here I've created a while back a uh, Corona Render tire material tutorial. And this is a very in-depth tutorial of how to really get all the imperfections. So if you want really focus on just the tire, this is the tutorial for that. What I'm going to do is kind of skim through all this and just kind of knock out basic shaders. So first things first. We're going to go over, click on the standard material or whatever name you have over here. Go to the materials tab, Corona, and then we're going to do a Corona legacy material. So there's this other one, and the issue is, this is me being very transparent, I don't use Corona much anymore. I use V-Ray. I have used Corona a long time. Well, about a year ago, I've been using it all the time. But ever since I started my company, I switched over to V-Ray because for me, that makes more sense in terms of a company pipeline. So I've been focusing strictly on that. However, Corona is an amazing program and it's a lot of fun to use and the results are phenomenal. It's just for what I do, I need something with a render farm and have uh, render settings. It's a, it's a bunch of more technical things versus just image quality. In my personal opinion, Corona provides better image quality. However, for a pipeline, 
purpose, I stick to V-Ray. So anyhow, with that being said, the reason I bring that up, there's a new material. It's called Corona Physical Material. That should be the one that should be used. This is the new one. This is the good one. But the problem is, is I haven't used Corona in a while, and I have just come to learn about this. I've always used Corona Legacy Material, and I believe it used to be just called Corona Material. So what's happening is if I try to use this one, the tutorials could be very confusing because it's going to be a learning process, and I don't feel comfortable doing that. So I'm just going to teach what I know and what I could teach quickly, So, which is why Corona Legacy Material. So the other thing to go over, these values. This controls how much of the color you want. If you do zero, it's black. If you do one, it's is going to use the full colored range. In V-Ray, I don't have that. So if you look at the V-Ray material, they don't have that value. They just have a color. So that's why in my tutorials, I never change this. I only change the color tone. So for the rubber, we're going to make this a uh, semi-dark. Then we're going to go, we're going to change this level to one simply because I want to use the full color range of that. We're going to tone this down to like a medium gray. For glossiness, we're going to do about a 0.6. So now we have kind of like a rubber material. We're going to apply that to this top. So this is going to be our tread. So tire, tread, so tire, face. That's what I'll call it. Then the next thing we'll do is for the bump, click here. Go to Maps, Corona, Corona Normal. Check Add Gamma Input. And then what we'll do is go and copy the folder of where all the Lambo maps are. And then go to General Bitmap. Load that in. And then we're just going to load this thread map. Hit this box to preview the texture. And there it is. So now we have our texture map. And what this does, it creates a 3D fake effect with a 2D map. So now if we bump up the strength to like 5 to 10, take down the blur a bit. So now what we're getting is an idea of a sidewall or a, a tread of a tire, but it's not really there. It's all 2D. Typically, what I would really recommend is you get a proper 3D tire model. You could find those on the Internet. You could buy them. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to use what we have present. So that way we don't have to deal with having to purchase anything. Everything is free as far as I'm concerned right now. So now that we have that, what we do want to do is add a little bit of surface imperfection. My other tire tutorial really goes into that. I'm just going to, again, do a very basic setup. So in case we don't have UV coordinates, the easy way to do this is adding a Corona triplanar map. And what this does, it just makes all the, uh, the textures based on uh, kind of like a perfect square value based on what you tell it the size of it is. And in a second, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to go to bitmap. And then if you go to the link I'm going to add in the description, you could download these maps. And I'm just going to create a folder, and I'm just going to keep adding maps into them as I proceed with these tutorials because I'm doing these on the fly. So the maps will just keep expanding, and I don't want to keep re-zipping and re-uploading things. So I'll just have one neutral folder with maps just getting added. So what we'll do is we'll use dirty map contrast, make the blur about a 0.2, and then just change the scale until we get something that actually looks visually appealing. So there we go. So as you can see, now we're getting some surface imperfections. And then what I'll probably do is bump this RGB value up so I get a little more highlights in my highlights. And then now, what I'll do is go into the reflection glossiness and from 100%, we're going to change this to 50 to 20. So there we go. So this way, we're only using 20% of that texture and the rest, so I'll change it at 30 to get a little bit more. And I'll probably adjust the scale a little smaller like so. There we go. And then what I'll also do is go back to the bump and check this additional bump slot and add a noise. And then we'll do a 1, 0 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0.05, 0.08, just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit more of a natural look. So now that we have that created, we're going to copy this over to the sidewall. So I'm just going to drag and drop this into the bottom. We're going to name this tire sidewall click on this and just apply it 
Now, of course, the texture is wrong. So what we have to do is go into our uh, normal map and select the proper texture, which will be the uh, sidewall map. And it should apply. There we go. And we'll probably go in and lower this value so it's not as intense. And then if you want, you could probably bump up the glossiness a little bit to give it some of that armor all finish. So there we go. And that's the uh, the generic tire one. And now we'll do one more thing. Copy it again. And we'll just label this as tire. And the reason why is we'll select these little hair nipple things and just add a little rubber texture to that. All right. So now we have our carbon fiber. We have our tire. And then if we really want to see how these uh, materials are looking because we have overhead light what we want to do is create an additional light source so show our default layer go to corona go to rectangle and just in the top view move it around rotate the lights so these arrows or these lines point at the wall as you can see now we have a light source in our scene now we'll just uncheck occlude other lights uncheck visible and then we'll probably bump it up to 75. So that way now we get some of this uh, specular highlight visibility so we could make sure our metals and such look proper. So next thing is line in line is the uh, the wheel itself. So it's that rim, rim material. All right, so it's going to be a, uh, and I'll pull this up over here. It's kind of like a satin metal with maybe a little bit of coolness to it so that's what we're going to go for so first things first select a new material create a uh not a v-ray a corona legacy material we're going to name this rim select the rim apply it there we go now the way i personally like to create my metal materials is i always use the diffuse color which is this one up here as my shadow side of the material so that's the uh the, the juicy dark contrast color so for metals especially i typically like to let the reflection really do all the work and the diffuse is really dark so here we're going to make it about a uh, a 10. we're going to turn on the metal value to one or the level of it so now we have a clear coat finish we're going to change the fresnel ior in a nutshell what this does it tells you how much metal factor do we want in terms of uh, intense clear coat? Uh, 1.52 is the default. This is kind of like your generic clear coat. If we bump it to something like F8, this becomes more chrome. So we'll do something like F6. And then I'm, I'm saying F6 because of F-stop, but <laughs> it's not F6, it's just for no IOR 6. And then for glossiness, we'll just do like a 0 0.6, 0 0.7 to just kind of find that happy spot where it kind of feels and looks something like this so we'll probably lower diffuse some so as you can see the darker the diffuse the more contrast we get in our metal so change it to a four so that's that's feeling kind of nice so now we're going to add some of that surface imperfection to the rim as well so i'm just going to copy the uh gloss in this map from our tire i'm just going to put it right into here paste it so as you can see there we go now what i am going to do is use the less contrast version of the map so i'm going to click here and then i'm just going to do the dirty map as you can see this is a little brighter tone down that blur there we go and then I'm just going to go in and change this to about 10%. I don't really want much of it. I just want the idea of it. I don't really want to see it. So as you can see, if we look in here, you could kind of get a hint of something there, but not really. And that's, that's just something that adds a little more realism to it. So there we go. So the next thing is going to be the, uh, the gold emblem. So we're going to name this gold, and I believe by default there's already the material for the badge that's called gold, so that's fine. When it, when we apply it, well, I guess the air didn't come up, which is fine. So we're going to change this Corona Legacy. So gold emblem. There we go. So for the diffuse color of this gold, we're going to make it a very dark desaturated brown slash bronze type of thing. 
So something like this with a little bit of temperature, but not much. Turn this on, bake it a six. And then for the color of the reflection, we're going to give it a saturated yellowish goldish hue like so. And then for the glossiness, we're going to make it like a 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So let's look at the reference of this. All right, so we are way too warm. It has to be a lot more yellow slash green. Like so. There we go. Now we're starting to really get it to feel the same. Maybe darken it and desaturate it some more. There we go. So there's our Lambo gold color. And now we're going to make this a Corona layered material. Keep. We're going to add a clear coat. So we're just going to do another Corona leg legacy material. Diffuse is black. Reflection is one. And then make this uh, mask map a fall off for now. And then this way we get a little bit of a clear coat finish, so it's not just a satin. And we'll probably bump this uh, up from 1.5 to, to a 4, maybe to a 3. So that way it's a little more chrome-like. So there we go, that's gold. All right, next thing is the glossy black cap. So what we'll do, a new, uh, new Corona Legacy material, plastic black glossy there we go make the value of one here we go 0.98 there we go and then I'll just lower the uh, the intensity of the color of the reflection so now we have that now we need the uh, the diffused black which is on the back side right there so we'll just copy this by dragging and dropping it plastic black Instead of glossy, we'll name it diffused. There we go. Go into the uh, actually the rim and copy this imperfection map from him. We're going to put it in the glossiness slot over here. Select these two elements, apply the map. Now we're going to get some of that imperfection. As you can see, the size of the, uh, the object is a lot smaller. So what we'll do is go in <clears throat> and scale the map down. So we get a little more detail on these close-up shots, like so. And then we'll change it to about 30%. Make it this about 0.75, like so. 35. There we go, now we have that done. So the next material that I know is we have our hardware, then we have our valve stem, and then we're gonna have the, uh, the brake rotor and then the metal so what we're going to do is we're going to knock out a few metals at once before we start actually the uh of assigning them so this is what we'll do this rim material i kind of like the idea of it so we're going to copy it to another empty material slot that we're not using we're going to name this metal dark there we go make this a one make this 0.75 maybe this one's going to be 2.8 and then uh, take these little guys, we're going to assign it, see how it looks like. So might still be a little too too bright, so we'll just tone down the, uh, the reflection color. So there's that. All right, now we're going to take this, drag and drop to another one. All right, metal warm. And what we'll do is bump this up and give it a bit of warmth in the... Uh, the actual reflection color, like so. So we'll bump this up to about a, an, a 6, 0 0.8. And then, of course, for a warm metal, we want a warm uh, base, base coat. So that way it makes a little more sense why our shadows are also warm. So there's that. And then that's the material that's going to go on the inside hardware back there. And so just to test it, let's select that, assign this, and see what it's looking like. It might be a little too warm. So I'll just isolate these two things, select that, select that, hold Alt, press Q. There we go. And then this light source might just be a little too intense. So we'll just make it 40, 30. All right, so that metal is warm. 
Uh, I'd like a little bit more of an imperfection on it. So we're going to change this 10 to about a 50. See what happens. Maybe a 30. There we go. Change that to like a 4. Maybe darken this diffuse just a little bit. And this is really the process of creating materials. You just kind of look at it, see what you like, dislike, and tweak. The way I've always done it is just eyeball it. There's no perfect blueprint for what works and what doesn't. If it looks good, it's good. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Now I'm going to take this backside thing and I'm going to put the, uh, the plastic black diffuse on it. There we go. Now what we have is the valve stem. We're going to copy the warm metal and name it metal cool. We're going to bump up the, uh, the color of it. Tone this down and give us some cool blue tone like so make sure our shadow side of the material is also on the cool side we're going to desaturate it some take the valve stem assign the metal cool and then this might be a little too cool yeah so we need to desaturate us some more so we're going to bump this up take that down Take this like a six, make this a 0.9. So there we go. Got that valve stem material done. All right. So by looking at things, we pretty much have everything done except for now the brake rotor. So the inside of this, we'll just assign the, uh, the plastic dark diffuse since the side can be seen. So here we go. Next thing we're gonna do is the uh, the brake rotor, and again, we're going to use the carbon, carbon ceramic texture created by Sergey that he was nice enough to share to the public for free. And we're going to assign a material to this. We're going to isolate these two elements. Again, Alt Q is the shortcut for that. Click on the word standard or V-Ray, whatever you have in here. Change it to Corona Legacy. For the diffuse level, we're going to leave it at one. Color, click on the little box, click bitmap. We're going to go in and load this texture map. Click on this box. So now we can preview what the map looks like. So as you can see, the map's already doing all the work for us. But now what we have to do is kind of desaturate it. Now, there's two ways you could do this. You can do it in Photoshop, or you could do it within 3D Max, which is very convenient. So if you click on Bitmap, and then click on Color Correction, when this comes up, just press on Keep Old Map. This is like your general color correction of the texture. And we're just going to desaturate it like so. There we go. And now what we'll do is we'll darken it because we're going to also put this in the reflection slot and let the reflection attributes do some work for us as well. So here for RGB level, we'll do 0.2. Now it's darkened. I'm going to drag and drop this into the color box. So right here. When this window comes up, we want to copy, not an instance, a copy. Change the reflection value to 1, so we're using this. Go into here and make sure the output is changed from 0.2 to 1. The reason why is because we copied it, it preserved that 0.2 value. So now we're at a 0.1. So now as you can see, what's happening is we're getting a, uh, a clear coat finish on it. And we don't really want that. So what we'll do is change this again to 0.7. Bump this up to a four. And the reason why this works is right now, the, that map is our reflection map. Think of this as an alpha in Photoshop. What's white is seen, what's black is not. And the way this works is with the reflection map, whatever's white is pure reflective, whatever's black is not reflective at all. Anything gray is semi-reflective. So our carbon ceramic texture map it has a white, it has grays, it has darks. So it's working as a reflective source. So as you can see, it, it's on and off. And that's why we put it there. But now what we're going to we use the reflection glossiness to diffuse that reflection map, like so. And so now what we're doing is we're getting some really, really fun looking highlights in the brights. It's getting darker in the darks. It's becoming more realistic and feels like carbon, carbon uh, fabric weave things occurring. And then what we'll also do is go back to the glossiness. And again, I, I like using dirty maps, so we're going to put that in there as well. And then just lower that to about 20%. And so there we go. 
So there's our carbon ceramic texture. And if you want to personally, this is all a matter of opinion now. It's, there's no right or wrong answer. If you want to see more of it, just bump up this uh, Fresnel IOR value like six, eight. The more you bump it up, the more that uh, reflective map is going to be visible. And that's how you get it to be seen. The other way around it, like let's say you don't want your darks to be as dark. Again, you can leave that at a four. You go back to that diffuse texture map and change the RGB value from 0.2 to like 0.8, 5, whatever you want. The reason why I did 0.2 is, again, like I mentioned with my metals and such, I like to use the, uh, the reflective properties to change the way it behaves visually. So that in a nutshell right there is the data prep process of the wheel. We created all the materials from scratch. The only thing that we have now, if you take a closer look, is we have <clears throat> our model quality is we're getting these jagged edges, kind of like uh, pixelated edges, if you will, from Photoshop speech. So the way we fix this is we have to add a TurboSmooth modifier. And before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and stop real time. I'm going to expand this. Oh, oh yeah, we're not done yet. Forgot one more layer. It's going to be our brake caliper layer. So let's do that. Same thing, I applied a material override on the whole thing, so we started from scratch. So for the uh, the bleeder nipple, we're going to make that our silver material. Then for the hardware right here, we're going to make this the warm material. For the brake pads, we're going to assign the, uh, the rubber or plastic black diffused. There we go. So the next thing is we have our actual caliper. So we're going to create a brand new material. And I wonder, let's just use metal dark as our duplicate. And we're just going to name this brake caliper assign it change the uh, reflection glasses 0.98 so now we got the uh, the clear code happening now as you can see we have still too much surface imperfection it's not allowing this uh, glossy factor to come into place so we'll just change this to like a two so now as you can see we're starting to get that wet reflection line that's good the other thing i want is i want to add a bump map to this so i'm going to click on the word that says none on bump add a noise this is going to be our orange peel. Make it a 0 0.1, 0 0.07, there we go. And then for a bump, the value, we're gonna change it to 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.03, there we go. So now we have some orange peel on there. Again, this is probably not going to be seen, but I like details, so that's a detail I'd rather leave. And then the last but not least is the Lamborghini uh, type. So we'll just name this, uh, caliper branding there we go corona legacy material and then on the reference image that i see of this one it's just kind of like a, a gray well we got to make sure it stands out so it looks like our caliper might be just a little too reflective so we'll just tone this down this one's 1 1.5 and then tone this down like so there we go, and then our caliper branding, 0.95. Tone down the reflection properties of it, and tone down this. There we go. And then what it, what just happened, if you saw it kind of like got weird, and then successfully interrupted. So 3D Max has an auto save feature. If you go to Customize Preferences, and then the Files tab, where it says Auto Backup, you could change this to how like how many minutes after every backup it backups and how many backup total this is great if you 3d max will crash on you it happens this is something you have to accept it's part of unfortunately the program it has improved when i first started cgi this thing would crash like every 30 minutes to an hour the crashing was as as popular as the backups, which is why they have an auto backup system now. So I still leave that. And then the undo level, you might want to change it to like 500. So you have unlimited undos more or less. And then so um, that's why I made it a habit of doing incremental saves, one, two, three, because before it used to corrupt and it'll corrupt the files. So this is just a habit from 15 years ago when I got into CGI. Now, there we go. So our, that's done. We have our front wheel left. So now we have our full wheel assembly. So first things first, what we have to do is take this and apply the same uh, concept of all the materials to the other wheels. So let's just knock that out first. So we'll unhide these. So one thing at a time, let's just knock out the uh, 
the calipers. All right, so we'll select these like so. And then we'll assign caliper black. There we go. Next thing is going to be the uh, the warm hardware. And so just a heads up, what I'm doing here is I press Z for zooming extends. I'm rotating, I'm zooming in, and that is just something you're gonna, the more you do, the faster you'll get at it. But that's what allows me to quickly select these elements and move around. So metal warm, where is it? There we go, hide that. Then we're gonna do our Lamborghini branding. There we go. Like that. Then we have our nipples, which is the uh, the silver metal material. So metal cool. There's that. And I think there we go. Last but not least is just the uh, the pads, which is our plastic black diffused. And there we go. So we and then this message comes up whenever you click on hide. This just means if there are layers that you force to be hidden. If you click yes, it will unhide everything. If you click no, it just unhides the objects within the layers that are visible. So there we go. We have that done. Now we'll hide this and we'll just unhide the wheels like so. All right. So first things first, work our way from the outside in. So we have tire face done. And then if you press F4, that turns on this uh, like shaded wireframe mode so that we can still have solid objects and see the wireframe. So tire sidewall done. Then we'll select the little hairs on the sidewall. Add the uh, the rubber material to it. So which one is it? It's going to be the tire. Oh, uh, and as you can see, we forgot to turn off the uh, the normal map. So we'll just do it like that. There we go. And actually, let's drag this one here. Copy it. Disregard. We go fix that problem before it becomes a problem. And it looks like we did assign it. So to not have to manually select them again, we'll just click on this little guy, select by material, select hide, hide these two because we've done them. All right. Next is the outer rim, which if you click on this, so this is how in 3D Max you can see what material it's using. When you click on it and you look at this material editor, if you see these little solid white lines around the material, that's what we're using. So that's how you can quickly figure out which material is being used by what object. So there's that. Carbon fibers left as is. If you press F3, it turns on the wireframe only mode, which when making selections, the awesome thing about that is like if it's shaded, you you can't click into like a hole of an object. But if you turn on wireframe, the only way you select objects is by selecting their wireframe. So it makes it very convenient when you have to isolate things quickly. So next thing we're going to do is select this black, which I believe was using a uh, black plastic diffuse. There we go. Hide that. Now this was going to be black metal diffused, I believe. Metal dark. Yep. Like so. Then we're going to select the valve stems. This is going to be metal cool. Done. Then this is going to just be our carbon ceramic map, which is a no-brainer. Hide those. The inside of the uh, the brakes, we just did. Uh, well, we'll find out what we did in a second. Yep, it was plastic dark diffuse, so we'll assign that. There we go. This was metal warm, so we'll select these guys, put metal warm on it. There we go. So now we're just going to zoom in a little closer when we do these little quick isolated elements. So that's that. This one's going to be plastic black glossy. And I think this one was plastic black diffuse, but I'll double check just in case. Yep. Plastic black diffuse is what we use on the outside. So there we go. Now I'm just going to rotate around. Since that's the main one, we'll do it like that. There we go. Then this was plastic black glossy. And then this one was our golden material. There we go. And then last but not least, same thing here. Plastic black glossy. And now gold. All right. So now that we have that done, what we want to do next 
is sm create, fix the smoothing issue that I mentioned that we had. So the way we're going to do this is, again, it's just adding that Turbo Smooth modifier. I think I did a video showing it. Anyhow, what I don't really care to do is add it on this. You don't really notice these rounded edge issues. And the problem with that Turbo Smooth modifier, when you add it on one too many parts, you will notice an issue when it comes to uh, like performance in your 3D viewport. So it actually looks like these don't have it, but this one on the front already did. So we'll hide that. Let's see what happens when you assign it. All right. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to assign the turbo smooth to everything except for these little hairs. We'll hide those. We don't want them. We'll hide the default layer because I don't want the ground. Like so. So there's two ways of doing this. One, hold control. And then actually, we do not need this internal guts. That stuff's not even seen. We'll just go in and well, it was smoothed on the outer on the fronts, not on the backs. All right, so now that we have this, there are two ways of doing this. You do control A, select all the items, go into the modifier list, and then with all these selected, you can add the uh, the turbo smooth modifier, like so. So once we add turbo smooth. Where is it? There we go. And we're going to change this iteration to two. Now, as you can see, it's beautiful, nice and round and the quality just, it becomes what we want it to be. Now, the other way of doing this, I'm going to delete this, is you create a shortcut. And the way you do this, you go to customize hotkey editor, go in here, find turbo smooth. Where is it? So Turbo Smooth Modifier, and the one that I added is for W. So all you do is you click on the one, you click Assign. So for instance, you press W, click Assign, and it'll add it. So this way, I just naturally select everything, press W, and it adds it. And because I use Turbo Smooth a lot, that's why I have it as a hotkey. So that's the other way of doing it. So there we go. And now what we'll probably end up doing is the same thing on the, uh, the calipers. Let's see. Nope, they're actually fine. As you can see the, how dense this wireframe is, you could tell this has already been subdivided with Turbo Smooth. So that's fine. Leave it as is. And that, in a nutshell, is our uh, full uh, little video on creating materials for the wheels. We have the full Lamborghini wheel surfaced. So now we'll just unhide the rest of our car. There we go. Now we just start working our way down through the other elements. And then what I will do, again, I am not sure. Okay, so earlier today, I created this tutorial, and then it never recorded audio, which is why I am redoing it. So I already had the gold made, so I'm just going to reassign this one. There we go. And then what I might do is just... Diffuse the the gold tone just a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. And that is our wheel tutorial.